question 11 what is the purpose of the substream command question 12 what is the purpose of putting the identity on new tables question 13 what is the difference between truncate and delete in sql Question 14. What is the purpose of the queries function? Question 15. Do you know the match command and what is its purpose? Question 16. What is the purpose of the string split function? Question 17. What is the view? And give me an example. Question 18. What is the storage procedure? And give me an example. Question 19. What do you know about the joins and which ones do you know? Question 20. What is the difference between union and union? The substring. The substring is used to extract a string of characters from a specified length. Okay? Uh, I will always use my favorite table, contact. And if we want just the first name as initial, we're gonna use the substring function. So, for the query, select substring, okay, with the function with my name of the column. So we're gonna use one and one, close the parentheses as initial. First name for my sorry from my favorite table contact okay we have you know, just here and if we play the query we can see that the substring take only the first character okay and stop at the first it start at the first and stop at the first okay so Michael, L from Liz, and so on. Okay, so you can see that it's pretty easy to set up. You can string from, you can take string, sorry, from a column. And if I want to, uh, to take the first two letters of the name and the next three. Okay, so copy and paste. And so in this example, the two and the three. And if I play this query, you can see here, ik, fantastic uh, first name, and so on. And L, Lee Clint, for Bruce, for Leonardo, for Brad. Okay? So here I take, uh, I took the first two letters and the next three. I zapped, uh, I zapped the this letter okay uh, I can put seven if I want and what's happened if I put seven you see that the initial has changed okay Michael and and so on you can take all the characters you want in a string of characters so in development the substring sub sorry can be very useful so let's go for the next demonstration. Identity. Identity is something you often see on the tables. Uh, this allows you to create an auto increment column by default. That's to say to each time we insert a row, there will be an auto increment on this column. We call it identity. Okay. You can 
how near have one kingdom in Krum per table? And we can first auto increment by set identity in the end. I will explain it to you, sorry, in demonstration right after. So be careful when you create an identity column, it doesn't create a primary key by default. Okay, this is a myth about SQL. Uh, there are many people who believe that an identity column creates a primary key while it creates a classic, a classic column. It doesn't create uh, a cluster of index. So we are going to make a schema to clarify all of that for for you. I have identity, I have Nicola and his friend John who are present. Nicola is doing uh, is going to do a classic insertion on the table. What will happen? The identity will take the ID one. Okay. I have called the ID ID colon uh, ID. Now, now Bruno, for example, or John will make an insertion, a new insertion. Okay. Logically, it will take two and so on. Okay, three and four and so on. This is what identity stands for. Okay. It's just a noto increment. So come on, we we will see that in demonstration. Identity. Let's go for the demonstration. Use as usual the same database. Use test. And first question: Can I create two identity column on the same table? Okay, create table with two identity column. Okay. So I am executing the request, and as you can see, we got a narrow message. Only one identity column is specified, is, sorry, hello world, per table, okay? So therefore, we can only make one identity column per table. Afterwards, I recreate the same table with an identity, a simple identity with an increment one to one. Okay, and if I run this, it's good, it works perfectly. And if I reinsert a simple value, and what does the cell give? As I have already explained to you before in the demonstration, it will return as one, okay? First, in auto increment. For example, we cannot, we don't want to insert, we don't want, sorry, the two to be the next value. So we can first auto increment. How I can do that? So I'm going to do an insertion. I'm going to put the value 7, okay, which is here, and if I just run the insert, we have a error message, cannot insert explicit value for identity column in table when identity insert is set to off, okay? So we must force auto increment with a set identity insert on, okay? And after insert the value, we set to off, okay? Let's run this query. It's good, and what does the cell give? Now we have a ID 7 for Albert Smith, okay? If I reinsert another value, at what value does it start again? Let's insert a simple row, select from identity. You can see that the next value is now 8 and not 2. 
Okay. Okay, can I set a negative value for a NIDON TT? I am execute, executing this request, insert into with a value minus one, just here. Okay, let's insert this. And what does the select give? And as you can see, it went on the head to minus one. And if I reinsert another value, what value does it run? Let's run a new select. And as you can see that it went on the head, it went on minus one, and the next value is now nine. Okay? So I don't like the minus one value. Can I delete this? Test delete from test entity where id equal minus one. And what does the select give? You can see the minus one has been deleted. So we can uh, delete a value when you have an identity on a colon. Okay, let's question can we put a duplicate in the identity colon? So we have, we have already the id 9, can we insert the same value for the 9? It's good, and what does the select give? There is no problem. Okay, we have two 9 on the same table. Now we are going to clear the table, let's truncate it, and I will start uh, uh, at an increment of 10. How? Can I do it? Where well, there is a, this is a command called dbcc check indent. Okay, with the name of the table and the receipt at at ten. Okay, let's run it and insert a simple value. What does the select give? Now, as you can see, it starts from ten. Okay, so DBCC check, DBCC checked ident can be very practical when you have when you have lost track of identity. There may be tables where there are multiple insert per minute, in which case, uh, which in which case, sorry, we can do a DBCC check ident to start again on a good basis. Okay. If, for example, we don't have a value between 11 and 20, we can do a receipt. Uh, after and a new, we insert a new value. And what does the select give? You can see that the next value now is 11. Okay, as you can see, it follows on with 11. Because the table was created with an increment step of 1. So, to start over with a new value, we can do a DBCC check out. We can also do a query on an identity column. Okay, you to do this, we must add a identity. Okay, for example, with the mean. If I will, this, and as you can see, it's 10. Okay, and can we update an identity? And as you can see, it doesn't work. Cannot update the identity. And to finish, how to know the current identity? There are two ways. This is uh, even a first, but which is rarely used. So I put the two. The two must come. Identity at scrap identity. It lets you know where we are in terms of identity. So let's run it. And if we run, we see that we are at 11 for the two queries. Okay? So come on, I hope it's a lot clearer to you for identity. We can see that this, that this is one way of making increment of the, on the tables. It helps you to follow where you are when inserting table.
which is something you often see in SQL. So come on, let's move on the next section. Truncate vs delete. Uh, the difference between a truncate and delete is that truncate is a DDL, okay, data definition language statement, such as create, drop, and alter, okay. Uh, truncate and delete, delete data from a table, okay. Uh, delete is a DML, data manipulation language statement, like select, insert, date, and so on. Okay, so truncate can not have a WHERE clause. So, truncate remove all the rows from a table without recording deletion. Okay, so it won't make the log bigger. Where the delete uh, can make it bigger because it will delete rows by row. The truncate does not do this at all. Okay, it will move everything all at once. Uh, as I told you, uh, delete save all the data for each row in the transaction log file. So be careful when you when doing a huge delete. Check your SQL server log logs. Sorry, truncate does not. Erase data from pages, but max them as reusable. Re okay, so when you have a lot of data, do delete. If you don't use that data anymore, do a truncate. Okay, delete on the other hand, physically deletes the data. Okay, so let's go to the demonstration. Let's go for the demonstration about the delete and truncate. So we create two tables, parent table and child table. Okay, the child table refers, uh, refers sorry, to the parent table with the foreign key. Okay, foreign key reference to the parent table on the name column. Okay. So let's create these two fantastic table and insert some random value. And it's done. Now we do, can we do a truncate with a where? Okay, truncate table, parent table, and with the where name equal 3D. Okay, so okay. It's not possible. Echo is incorrect syntax near the keyword where. Okay. So note that in the truncate there are no filters. Everything is truncated. So the whole table is deleted. Okay. So let's do a begin run for open a transaction. Delete. And with the where and roll back to refine the transaction if you want. Okay, so let's go. Fortunately, with where we can do a delete. I have a foreign key error, but it works fine. Okay, so let's do a roll back to refine the data. And can we do a truncate with an integrity constraint? Does it take the integrity constraint in when I do I'm doing the truncate? Fortunately, there is an integrity constraint on the foreign key, so we cannot do a truncate. And what about the delete is the same error message? Okay. So now we will see the management of the rollback. I do a begin run. I do a trinket. What does the seller give? No rows. Okay. As you can see, there is nothing left. And let's do the rollback to refine our data. And what does the seller give? Luckily, we can do it. We refine the 
data. Rollback ending rollback on delete, be in turn, delete, select. You can see that the data actually has been deleted. Rollback and select. Fortunately, we can roll back on delete too. Okay. Table with identity. Create a new table with identity. One one. Insert into this table some random value. What does the select give? Three rows. Okay. So identity is interesting. You have to be very careful with identity. In some cases, uh, we don't pay attention and we do a truncate on tables that have identity and then we do an increment that is not good. So let's delete a rows, delete ID2, okay, for John and not no. Let's delete the row has been done and what does the select give you can see that the id2 has disappeared okay and what does the dbcc check in on give the dbcc check in on uh, lets you know the future value of the increment number okay so the current identity value value is free so here we start again from the next value four okay so let's insert a new row and you can see that now bruno has the id four okay and let's do a test for the truncate do again the dbcc check identity current identity value is null and let's insert a new table and the select and the identity now is one it will start over from one okay so watch out for way to delete data on Hoto's identity increment okay it can be dangerous for your data and your application so uh, this is the big difference where the, this is the big difference sorry, for truncate and delete. Coalesce. Coalesce is also something we see very commonly in Trozac history. It will evaluate the arguments in order and returns the current value of the first expression that does not initially take the value null. Okay? A simple example. We do. We do select coalesce with two parentheses, with a null value, okay, and the next value. Coalesce. So if I want this query, it will zap the first null value okay and we take the one just like that so coalesce uh, allow us to not sorry not to evaluate nulls value uh, in the query when we have a lot of them in our select so let's create a simple table with three columns number one number two and number three and these are just some simple row with mm, null values no values and the handover row with two null values and if i want to select for my number i have some simple values in my table news and new. i think you understand see if I want to remove the new value in my select, so select queries number one, number two, and number three as number of phone from my number. So if I run this query, you can see that 
can see that he could just remove all the null values in my select. So it's going to be smart enough. And it's going to remove all the null values, even the two null values in the two columns where there are the two values here. Okay? So uh, you can see that it's smart enough to do it. And it can be very handy in some query, uh, so query, sorry, if you don't want the new values to point you selected. Okay? So let's go for the next demonstration. Merge. Merge allows you to extract rows from a source table to make an update, a delete, or insert in a target table. This avoids um, writing multiple modifications in several instructions. Okay? So merge is, is extremely powerful. It uh, can be very handy in some cases. It will save you Uh, from writing multiple chains in multiple instructions. Okay, I will show you right now. Use formation as usual. I will create two simple table. One table book inventory, and the second table book order. Both table have been created and I insert some simple value and on the second table. Okay? To show what the merge can do, I will first do a join on the two tables. Okay? And we will see what uh, we will merge. So, let's go. So, you must to know that Uh, in first uh, into is an optional clause. Okay. What we are going to do is when this uh, we, there are values that match here yeah, is going to do a join on the two columns and add the quantity. Okay. So we play all the query. And let's focus on the values 1, 3, and 5. Uh, okay? So we can see that these are the values that will be affected by the join. The join, sorry. For 1, okay, with the join, so uh, at each correspondence, on the join, it will add the quantity, okay? For the join, so it's 6 plus 3 equal 9, okay? 6 and 3. For the 3, okay, it's a join on the 3, so 3 plus uh, 0 equal 3, and for the values, 5. Okay, 5 plus 0 equal 5. Okay, so what it's going to do is when there have values uh, that match, it's going to do a join on the two column and add the quantity. Okay, let's run the merge. We will check anyway. Merge three rows affected. And what's happened? If I will, we see that uh, we have just the value that match and there are and there are quantities. Okay, sorry for the three, it's not three, it's zero. Okay, but for the one, it's the good result six plus three. Okay. So we merge all the matches that were uh, there during the join and added the quantity. 
we can also do uh, a merge in a delayed and a, an insert. So you have to remember the first table here, it's the destination table. Okay, and the second one is the source table. Okay, we are going to work with the join we have done before. Let's run the two both query to make it easier. So in this example, if the query is matched, matched, sorry, uh, then delete. Okay, and if the joy is not matching, then insert a new rules. So we have a quantity equal zero that is for the great USB. The quantity is zero, so the row three will be delayed. Okay. So this one, sorry, it's a, if the, it's the source table and this is the destination table. Okay. So the rows with the seven has not patched in this table. So the insertion of lice, the row seven will be done on this table. Okay. In the book inventory table. So let's run the merge. Three rows affected. And what does the select give? You can see that it deleted the row three okay that had zero so he didn't match and inserted the row seven that was not in the source table okay so we saw that by doing a query that is not extremely difficult we did many instructions just by doing a merge so use a merge okay don't forget this powerful function you will see that in some cases it will it will help you greatly so let's go to the next demonstration string split and stuff uh, string underscore split first will split the character expression using a specify separator so how does string split work you have to put the characters you want to fill in and it will make an underline with the comma separator. Okay, so string split one, two, three, four, five, and to make an underline with you have to put a comma separator. Okay, I think uh, it will help you enormously in your development. So let's see the fantastic result. As you can see, here the result. Okay. One, two, three. With, and it will make an underline. Okay. With, uh, you have just, just to put a comma. Stuff, st stuff function allows you to insert a channel into another channel okay stuff with the character expression the start the length and the replace okay let's run the query and you can see that um, okay for the hey the first character okay so it starts to the second character, so the B, the B has been replaced by A, G, K, L, M, N, okay, and for the three character, okay, so he replaced B, C, and D, and restart after the N at A, okay, so A, B, C, D, a, B, C, D, uh, B, C, D, sorry, has been replaced. And we start at E, N, F. Okay? So, 
that was the demonstration for string, string split and stuff. There are these are small functions that can greatly make you work easier during your development. Okay, don't forget these two powerful functions. So let's go for the next demonstration. What is a view? View a view is kind of a virtual table. It actually contains the result on an SQL query that you define when creating a view. It only contains the result of an SQL query. Okay? A view is used exactly like a table in SQL queries. So it makes writing queries much easier. The view is simple, uh, is simply sorry, a virtual table. Okay. So let's go for the demonstration. Okay, let's go for the view demo using information database as usual. So I have a request just below. There is something that exists for this kind of query that we need to say. We call it views. The problem is that I have to save the query each time or type it again by hand, okay? Which is, which, uh, is a bit complicated every morning. So we are going to create a view. Okay. So the syntax is create view, okay? As create view with the name of my view as an iPod my code. Okay, you can see it's very simple. Just create a view. The view, view has been created, and if we look for the management studio, sorry, if I do a refresh on the view, I have my view which appears which I created previously. It also uh, has column, like a table, okay? So in the view folder, column, and the three columns, total, gender, and date of birth. The column has here, total, gender, and date of birth, okay? So I will select with view. It's like the select from a table. It's simple. Select from my simple view. And I have my result. Okay, it's the same result that the query inside the view. You understand? I can also put filters in my view. I can just, I can call just a colon. Okay, I can like a table select total from my simple view okay and what's what does this give just two so no need to retap the request the request every time it's now saved by a view so i no longer need to retype the code i have to type every morning to get my result I put in the view and I am safe. We will do a particular case in terms of security. For example, I want Michael to see only people under 30 years old. Okay? So for Michael, create view, select from contact where age under 30 and another view for John only see wells who's under 30 years So create two views for Michael and John. And John, it's for the person where age greater than 30. So let's create the two view, create view for Michael and create view for John. And if we look on in management studio, you can see that the two views have been created. Create view for John and create view for Michael. Okay? 
And what does the select give for the two view? So select from view join, and you can see that join have a view with the edge greater than 30. Okay, so John can only see where people over 30 years of age. You can also ensure a better filtering at the security level. Okay, please notice this. And if I want to select from view Michael, you can see that Michael see only the person which with the edge under the under 30 years old, okay? Don't, don't forget that it's a good option for the security, okay? If I want, for example, that two people don't see the same data, so we can, we can create view, we can think of that too. So can we do, can we put, sorry, an update in a view? Create view as update contact. If I know we can, we can do, we can put an update in a view. It doesn't work. It's not possible. Can we put a delay, a delay, sorry, in a view? It's the same error message. It doesn't work. And can I put an insert? Not possible. Only the select can be put in the view, contrary to the story procedure. We will talk about them in the next section for the storable procedure. In a storable procedure, we can put an insert, a delete, an update, a select, whatever we want in the editing a view, editing a view. Uh, for example, I want to change a piece of my query in my view. I want to change the mail by the format. So I want to change it's a an alter view okay let's like creatable uh, alter table uh, alter it's alter view okay if you want to modify an object in a script server it's alter you can do this with management studio right click script view has an alter okay to a new cover editor windows and the alter is here. And if I change the mail by more, I run execute. And if I do a select from my view, you can see that the result have changed. Now it's from one for the total of one. Okay, alter view for change a view. To rename my view, to rename my view, it's uh, as it's like the uh, SP rename like a table. It's per rename my view, comma, and the new name I want to give to my new view, SP rename. Let's run this query and if I do a refresh. On management studio in management studio you can see that view now it's view 2 this can also be done with ssms you can change you click on the touch f2 or right click on rename and you put the name simple view and for the delete it's drop view drop view as drop table okay drop view simple view and the view has disappeared in management studio you can see that it's quite, quite simple to drop view in sql server so in this demonstration we have seen how to create view, the view modify, renaming run, and deleting a view. And we will move on to the next section. What is the storage procedure? 
Uh, I am a big fan of Stowell Procedure. It has a lot of benefits, especially at the performance level. Uh, this is not the point of the topic. The goal is to explain to you what is the procedure, storage procedure. Okay? I am deeply convinced that the storage procedure it's, is the best thing to play a batch transaction on SQL Server. Okay? Uh, a storage procedure is a set of SQL statements uh, compiled in the database. Okay? It can contain the statements delete, update, and insert not like the view. The storage procedure also allows a simplification of the SQL code like the view. It benefits from the power of the SQL cache. Once you launch a storage procedure, it's compiled into the SQL cache plan in the memory, knowing that RAM is a thousand times more efficient than the disk on average. We quickly understand its benefits, hence the great interest of the storage procedure. Okay, so that's why I'm a big fan of it. I'm talking about it just for information. In terms of security, the user will not have access to the tables. We but we go through storage procedure to also provide security. Okay, so let's go for the demonstration. Let's go for the demonstration of creating a storage procedure. Uh, I have insertion to do every day. Okay. I admit uh, I am a little fed up with always making the same insertion. What I can do to simplify the code, I can put it in the storage procedure. So the storage procedure, we start with batch which will store inside it. So the syntax is create procedure like the create view or create table, create procedure with the has, like the view. Okay. So you replace view by with procedure. Okay. So I am creating this storage procedure with the insert into contact just one row Dark Vador. And let's create the storage procedure. And if we do a refresh, it's in the programmability. Sorry, it's not easy to, to, to say Program, programmability storage procedure. And you can see that a new storage procedure has been created. It's PS PS insertion. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play it. Okay, for uh, launch the storage procedure, you have to use the exit. Exit or execute is the same thing. Okay, I have always, uh, I always write exec, but you can write execute. Okay, so let's go, let's run the execute command execute with the name of my storage procedure. And you can see, you see, you have one role affected. Okay. So I think it's wrapped. And if I want the select to check if my storage procedure has, work, has worked, we can see that a new role has been inserted. It's my friend Dark Vador. Okay. The update. Can we do an update in a storage procedure? I will create a storage procedure. PS. PS update. Okay. Create procedure. PS update. And I write an update inside the storage procedure. Update contact. Set name dark2, where name and dark22. Okay. Let's create the storage procedure. 
n if I do a refresh on management studio I can see PS that is has appeared has been created and if I run my PS update sorry very mistake dark 2 when I'm is dark and if I run master word procedure I have one row affected and what does the select give? You can see that now it's dark too. Okay. And can we do a delay? Create procedure delay 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 from contact. Okay, delay from contact where name equal dark too. Okay, it's the same thing that the insert and the update. Procedure and if I want my storable procedure and do a select from contact, I can see that the radar has gone. Okay, if we look for management studio, you can see that right now we have three storage procedure PS delay, PS insertion, and PS update. If, we want, if I want to change, for example, the delay in the procedure, uh, the storage procedure PS delay, I can do like the view actor procedure and change the name. Okay, in this example, is strip. So actor procedure and exact, exec, execute the storage procedure delay, one row affected. And what does the select give for strip? We have no strip as disappear. And if I want to rename the PS delete, is the same thing as the table or the view PS delete with the new name PS dot point two. Okay. Refresh my storage procedure, and now the it's the new name is PS2 and like the table I think you understand it's like the table like the view uh, drop procedure drop procedure PS delete 2 because I've written, renamed it just before okay it's I can delete it I must to put some square brackets uh, and if I want discovery it's good okay drop procedure so you can do uh, whatever you want in the storage procedure you can do a create procedure uh, have with the name as you want you can put millions of rows of code. Storage procedure are extremely powerful. Okay, I strongly advise you to work with them. I strongly advise you to work with them when you are doing when we are doing sorry large transaction batch. Okay, put everything in storage procedure. You will think. Uh, them later, especially on the performance side. This is not the point of the topic, but it's to guide you towards good decision if you want to drift into a DBA career. Okay, I will talk about that in other trainings. Okay, so let's go for the next demonstration. There are four types of joy. The right join, the left join, the full join, and the uh, inner join. Inner join in the middle allows to join the matches between the two tables. Okay. Left join on the left allows you to see the matches uh, on the left table and it's the opposite of the for the right join. Okay. And finally, the full join is the match of all the tables. When we had the is new filter, for example, on the left join, 
we just take the values of the left table without the correspondence with the right table. And for the full join, it will take the values of the right table and the left table, but without taking the correspondence uh, between the two tables. Okay? Union and Union Hall. Union and Union Hall is a command that concatenates the result of two or more queries. On the other hand, each of the queries to concatenate must return the same number of columns. If you don't take the same number of columns, when you make an union, it doesn't work. Example of two table we create two table create table one and insert just two single row, Wonder Woman and Captain America. And the second table with client two with Wonder Woman in duplicate. Okay, and Dag Grabber on my old friend. Let's create the table and execute execute sorry the both select. Here we see that the is the duplicate in the value Wonder Woman. Okay. So let's see what select union gives. What will it do? You can see the syntax is very simple. Select from my table client one union. Select from my table client two. Okay, it's quite simple. And you can see he took Captain America, Dark Vador, and Wonder Woman. So he concatenated the two select from the two tables. He gave the total result of the client table. Okay? And you can see that the duplicate has been deleted. No duplicate in my union. There is also union or union all. It allows you to take also the duplicates. You can see this syntax. You have just to add all. Okay. And if I run this query, I have Wonder Woman two types. Wonder Woman and two types. Okay. Union. Union, it takes out the duplicates. Union all, it doesn't take them out. So, when you think of union, you think about the concatenation of the table. Okay? So, let's go for the next demonstration. Question 21. What is the difference between YTP and OLAP? Question 22. What is the purpose of the intercept and except operators? Question 23. Explain me the role of the sequence on the table. Question 24. What is the trigger? Question 25. How to alias a column in SQL? Question 26. How to copy a table in Transact SQL? Question 27. How to remove a duplicate uh, in a query? Question 28. Do you know the case way? Question 29. What is the temporary table? Question 30. What is the synonym? Answer the question 21. What is the difference between OLAP and OLTP? Uh, OLTP online transaction processing. OLTP is a category of data processing that focus on transaction oriented 
task okay OLTP usually involve inserting updating and or deleting small amounts of data in a database OLTP mainly processes a large number of transactions of transactions sorry by a large number of users for the OLAP online analytical processing it's generally used to for data mining or the storage of aggregated historical data and is usually used in multi-dimensional schemes okay except an intercept you don't see them very often even on transact sql but there exit uh, exist uh, except returns the separate rows on the input query on the let but not fine by the query input query on the right okay intersect return the distinct rows or line uh, that, have, that are generated by both right and left input i think you got it it corresponds to a left join and the inner join okay it has intersect uh, correspond to an inner join and the except correspond to a left join okay so let's go together to for the demonstration intersect and except demonstration use summation yes usual and let's run the classic inner join as we saw before we have three rows one three and five okay for the classic inner join okay let's write the query for the intersect is the same thing like the that the inner join you will see that the intercept query is very simple to write for a customer and you have the intercept just the first select and you take copy and paste and you have just to change the table it's very simple to write huh? uh, select intersect and the second table just button if i run this query i have exactly the same result one three and five okay and if i also put the execution plan to see which query is the fastest uh, let's run the in the same times execution plan and we can see that in the execution plan the intersect takes 43 percent and the join just here 57 percent okay so uh, the intercept the intersect sorry is a little bit more speed speed in the join okay except 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 as the same syntax as the intersect so let's copy and paste so here you can see the request with the let join with the filter null the nothing as we saw in the previous demonstration nothing with the subquery and we can also write the exit so i change the intercept with the exit so we okay. just to see here except and run this query so normally we have this result just 12 and 13 for Albert Einstein and Chuck Norris by Hoffman. For the notion is the same result. And for the except query, 
I have exactly the same result. Okay. 12 and 30. Okay. So we can, in some cases, say why not rewrite some request, some query in except, or why not also in not in. Okay. And if we check the execution plan, 22% for the left join, 22% for the not in, but you can see that the except has have not a good result, 56%. Okay? So don't forget that you can rewrite the left join with the except. So let's go for the next demonstration. The sequence. To me, the sequence is uh, less well known at that the identity, but it still exists. Okay, it's almost similar to identity because uh, it allows to generate a sequence of numeric values in auto increment is the same thing. It works with all numeric types. Okay, tinit, small int, big int, big int, decimal, and numeric. Okay, if we create a sequence object without any option, the default type is big int. So be careful when creating it. Okay, maybe uh, it's uh, that's not what what you want. Now we will see the difference with identity uh, sequence. It is not linked to a table unlike identity. Okay? The, this is the main difference with the identity. Identity is linked to a table while the sequence is not. You will understand better afterwards. You can specify a max value for the sequence and not for the identity column. Okay, you can give a maximum value to the sequence. No need to insert a row in the sequence to generate the next value. However, in identity, you must insert a new row. So if you want to generate the next identity, you have, we have to insert a value. While for the sequence, you don't have to we can generate a next value without inserting a row. Okay, I will show you that after. You can recycle, recycle the sequence uh, once you have reached its max value with the cycle option. Okay, identity does not have this option. So that you understand better, we will see this scenario. We have two friends, Bruno and John. We have the sequence that we created. So we are going to insert a value in Nicolas table, table A. Uh, the sequence will give it 10 and 20, for example. The difference is that John on the right will insert a value in the table B and not in table A. So a completely different table, okay? And here we see that it text, it takes sorry thirty and forty. Afterwards, Nicolas insert two other values in table C, which will take uh, fifty and sixty, and so on. This is the big difference between identity and sequence okay so come on and let's go to the demonstration part for the demonstration of the sequence we are using our database as usual in this test and we are going to create a very simple sequence with the syntax create sequence so let's create 
the sequence uh, I have already created this and you can see if we make a zoom the sequence is here okay in the sequence folder on the programmability folder okay and if I script the sequence as create we have begin by default okay and we have an increment by one and we start at enough b just here okay so what we can do we can change its data data sorry type and we are going to create a sequence with a small int let's create this sequence and if i script again the small int sequence and you can see that starting with the minus 32,000 okay so you can choose view data type when you create the sequence so here I am generating the next next sequence by hand okay select next value for the new sequence I create and as you can see the result is minus 32,768 okay whereas for identity we have to insert a value so now I will I'm going to recreate a sequence starting at zero okay with an increment by one and with the type int let's create it and it's done and let's select the next value for this sequence it's zero okay because I start with zero and the next value it's zero okay so now we will see something more interesting so we forgot uh, you can uh, also alter a sequence you can change the increment okay increment by 10 sorry the name it's not good i change it right now and let's alter the sequence you can see that it works very well so let's play around and create two tables uh, a time name customer and an algorithm table name users okay and we will insert <coughs> four values okay and we will use the sequence the syntax for the insertion it's inserted to customer value next value for the name of the sequence just after okay so i am inserting four rows let's create the two tables before and inserting four rows okay and as you see the select of the customer table starts from the 10 20 for isomorphy and whereas the user table just below take 30 and 40 okay this is the big difference between identity and sequence in the sequence we can generate an auto increment on a separate table okay i want to show you it earlier and if you want to see the next value there is i think you understand its next value is 50. okay and do we insert a new line and if i make a just a simple test you can see and you can see that now it's 60. so why not it was the 50 because when I am doing the next value, it takes, it's already takes the 50 values. So when I insert an error, it takes the following value 
So very sexy. Okay. So let's make a new test. Let's truncate the ta table users. I will create a new sequence, but with the max value to five. Okay, so we cannot exceed the value five. So let's go. Let's insert data with the go ten to for insert tools. So we see that after the fifth values, sorry for the zoom, uh, we have the error message. The sequence object max value has reached its minimum or maximum value. Okay? So as you can see, it stopped to at five. And what does this I give? Just five here. So now I will drop the sequence. Let's drop it. So what should be done to avoid this kind of trouble? Okay, you have to put a cycle. Okay, with recycling. I still work with the same syntax. I restart for zero increment by one max value to five but with the cycle syntax. So I repeat the insertion with the code 10. Forget to create the sequence and let's insert with code 10. And we are going to see a very interesting thing. That it that once it reached the 5, it went back zero okay so we can attach a sequence to a table for attach a client a, cre uh, a sequence sorry to a table you have to create before a simple sequence and let's create into my table a constraint default and with the default, the next value for my sequence. Okay? So let's create the sequence, which is attached to a default constraint that calls the sequence. I'm just going to insert some simple rows, five rows, and we will see what's happen when we do a select. And as you can see, the sequence is incremented okay uh, so we can attach a sequence to a column which can have the default constraint okay uh, so you can see that it's interesting and powerful there is and there is a lot of a lot in common with identity so maybe in some cases we you will need the sequence on SQL. Okay, so come on, let's move on to the next section. The triggers. The triggers is a special storage procedure uh, that runs automatically when an event occurs in the database server. Okay, GML triggers are executed when a user tries to modify data with the GML data manipulation language okay insert update and delete event as soon as there is an insertion an update or a delete on the table we can create a trigger which will do operation on this table uh, so it's going to be and be called in the delete update or insert triggers are something that we see very often in uh, SQL when there, are, there is ma a manipulation on the table. We can do another query to get the related result. Okay, so let's go to the demonstration. I have already created the table, test trigger, insert some random values. Okay, and let's create my first trigger. Uh, so 
the name of my trigger is my trigger. Uh, on the table, test trigger after. Okay, insert. Uh, you can change in part update. Okay, or delete as begin. We choose the action we are going to do. And let's launch a print. Good to see you. So after each insert, we have a print. Okay. Now we are going to use the trigger. So let's insert a random value, a simple value, and let's run the trigger. We see that by magic, the trigger was requested and it made uh, a print of good to see you. Okay, as you can see, the trigger was requested in the insertion. But if I run 10 insert. So go 10. So it will run the print 10 times. Okay. So the trigger has been called 10 times. Okay. Um, so now we are going to do an alter on the trigger. Uh, we'll do an alter trigger on the same trigger, but we are going to replace the insert by with the delete. So every time we are going to do a delete, we print delete is funny. Okay. So let's alter the trigger and let's delete from top three from my table. Okay. So logically, it will be it will be sorry requested three times because there are three rows to modify. But as you can see, the cursor, the trigger has only be called once. Okay, so it's a set. It will run once despite there there being three rows lined. Okay, three modify modify rows. Okay. It's a pretty recurring SQL debate, so I want to show it to you in this demo. In hardware operating system like Orac or Postgres, it's not a set. It's going to run on every row. Okay, so it can be very practical, especially at the performance level. Because if you do a delay top of 10 million row, if we work, I will if we request. Sorry, 10 million times the trigger, the performance will be catastrophic. Okay? So, to disable a trigger, the syntax is alter table, disable trigger. Okay? We can disable it. To re enable it, it's, you must to replace disable by enable, and you can also disable all the trigger at once okay disable trigger all okay i forgot to show you but the trigger is here test and progress humility and uh, no, sorry it's on the table test trigger and the trigger is here okay so the triggers are in the table. So what was the demonstration about the trigger? So come on, let's go to the next demonstration. Okay, here we go. Now we will learn to deepen how to transact SQL. We learned how to select data, update them, insert them. We played with the where filter and we also learned how to delete data and now now we are going to go further in transact sql and we gonna to deepen how now knowledge shall we about the transact sql okay uh, so we will go step by step and first of all we are we gonna see uh, the alias in the columns so how do the alias works 
it's pretty simple. You have to know that we can rename a column in the select by, the, by a, uh, an alias using the has clause. Okay, so let's go. Don't forget to use your database function as always. And we are going uh, to create a table that we are going to work with the rest of the course. Uh, depending in the transact SQL will be done on the contact table. Don't be afraid, the table the where I will insert multiple values is attached in the course. So you won't have to retype the whole lines in this script. Okay? All my friend is here. Michael Jackson, Bruce Willis, Marilyn Monroe, uh, Angelina, Angelina Jolie, and me. Tu dis Olivier, je suis Olivier, Sharon Stone, and so on. Okay, let's execute the create table and insert the, all the data. Okay, 50 rounds affected. What does the select give? Select asterisk from contact. We are we have got all the lines, the 15 rows. Okay. Now we are good. So we are going to work with this table until the end of the transact SQL course. First, we are talking about the alias in uh, of the column. So select. Zoom. Select name as with the alias as nickname from my table. Okay, let's call our uh, column name as nickname. Okay, the syntax, as you can see, is very simple. Okay, so let's execute execute this query and you can see you can see that the column um, name just there has been changed to nickname okay so can I rename all the columns of course you you can so let's make a zoom so in this example Select name as nickname, first name as Superman, age um, as Spiderman, gender as Batman, okay, and date of birth as York. Uh, if I run this query, you can see that all the columns have been changed. Nickname Superman, Spiderman, Batman, and Hulk. Hulk, okay. Hulk in French. <laughs> okay, so you can see that it's pretty simple to uh, to put the as the alias in a query on Transact SQL. So that's it. That was the alias of columns part, and we go to the next section. Okay, how to copy a table? We can on SQL Server copy. A table to save it in case it make big change on my main table I tell myself for security I can copy the table the table and save it to copy the uh, a table to SQL Server use the command select into okay Allez. so let's go for the demo use formation and we will start a select first. We have, as usual, we see that we have uh, our 15 rows. Okay. So how can I copy my table? So let's make a zoom. Select asterisk into contact to from my main table 
okay so let's execute this query 50 15 rows affected and if we do a refresh on the top left refresh we have a table contact two okay we see that we copied we copied sorry the data from the contact table to the contact two table and if i do a select on the contact two it's the copy of the table contact okay is the same rows 15. we see that all the columns are identical to the principal column from contact table okay and what if i want to copy just one column one column it's select name just the column name into the new table to create for the copy contact free from my main table contact okay execute this query 15 rows affected again and if i do a refresh on the left we are we have a contact free table which appears and what does the select of the contact table free give just the column name okay and what if i want to copy just some data if you have for example a table with uh, that has 22 million rows we can filter the data with the where okay and copy just some data is this i do select into my new table contact form from my main table contact where the first name equal michael let's execute the square just one row affected Okay, and if I do a refresh on the left, we can see the contact for it just here, there, and what does the select give for my contact for just one row? Okay, we can see that just one row has been copied, copied uh, from my main table, my table contact, into the contact for table so keep in mind that you can save your table before to make change on it okay with the select into command so let's go to the next section the distinct the distinct allows to remove duplicated value in my column uh, so let's go for the distinct demo. First, we do a select. We still have how 15 rows, 50 lines. Okay. One and Willis, Jackson and Willis, my whole friends. If you, if we look carefully, we have two Willis values in my table. Let's make a zoom. Again, what is in the five rows and at the 15 rows we have the second release. Okay, if we are running this query, I have two release. And if I want to remove these duplicates, I will do a distinct. Okay, let's make a zoom. It's simply to write, um, select, distinct, with the name of my column, distinct name, and so on, from contact, where name equals, with. Okay, 
gets executed. This will be now we have just Willis only uh, Harpier's horns. Okay. I put the wire, but behind to show you that the duplicate, I uh, remove it and only one value remains. I can just appear once, okay? And the second release on this colon is appear, okay? So keep in mind that the disking, disking sorry, is for removing duplicates. The case when the case when allows to evaluate um, a condition and returns a result expression among several possibilities. Case when is something commonly practiced on SQL. Okay, it allows you to return a column depending on the expression you want to have in your result. So let's run the seg it uh, start from contact. And um, we are going to play with the gender column. Okay, so we are going to say in this column, the woman will be uh, the female will be Mrs. and the man will be Mister. So we will there will be a new column that we are going to play in the select by making a the case one. So let's write the query. Select star and write the case. Case when gender okay equal. Command with upper case then misses. And an another when when gender equal ah, then mister I forget the commercials here and uh, you have to put a hand at the hand on the case when from contact okay let's run this query you have to put the end if you delete the hand and run this query it doesn't work okay syntax and syntax near the keyword form so the hand is mandatory and run this query so here a new column that is played in the select by doing the case way so here the format is missing and the male, male is Mr. Okay, you have a new column that is played in the select by doing the case when. Okay, there is also the syntax of the else. If my result is not good, I can give a null over result that I will affiliate. So in this query, select the hedge between 16 and 20 then we are still young else we are not so young anymore and if I run this query here so all, all those who are between 16 and 20 we are still young 18, 16 uh, 17 and the other we are not so young anymore 24 and so on so in this demonstration we see that the case when it can be very practical during certain developments where we can have a request that comes out of more explicit value okay so let's go for the next demonstration Temporary table, variable, and global table. These are three types of table that we see very often in current developments on SQL Server. 
um, we will use this kind of table to process a big number of data. We can process a lot of data in this kind of table, but to have a more secure place, we can create this type of table to store them. It will be variable tables which be which will be deleted and which will not be used as a physical table tables. Okay. For example, um, this is a process with many aggregations from multiple tables, which can take several minutes. Before inserting this result in a classic table, uh, a table that we created, which is permanent to the server, why not use the tempor temporary or variable table to store its result if it crash so we can delete delete it okay so if a crash occurs there is no rollback which can uh, last even a very long time on a classic table on a temporary table we only have to stop the processing the rollback means that we want to return to the initial state when we start the query okay the rollback on the temporary or variable table is image so tempor temporary tables are prefixed with the hash key okay and they are created on the system database tmdb and then can undergo significant structural modification alter create drop and truncate so temporary table exists until the end of the session which is the end of the query you opened okay views do not accept temporary tables so come on we will do a demonstration on temporary tables right now okay let's go for the demonstration about the temporary tables okay so first things up duration of the table in a session a session is what we call a query okay we are going to create the table session for example Let's create the table, temporary table. Okay, it's done. And you can see that the temporary temporary table, sorry, is prefixed with the hash key. Okay. So the go, the go uh, means that we validate the work that we have done above it. Okay. And if we do uh, select in another query, let's create a new query and make the select from the temporary table that we are creating. Let's run the select and it doesn't work. Okay, so the session will last as long as the query was created in this session okay and if i run this select in this same session it's work it works sorry okay modification of the table we can create a temporary table and modify it if i create this temporary table and I, I can do a an alter table on it it's uh, flexible at that level rollback management cancel rollback uh, can cancel an implicit an implicit sorry or explicit transaction 
up to the beginning of the transaction, ok? Or up to the last registration point within the transaction. Rollback is always associated with the begin trend. trend. You can see here the begin trend, begin the transaction, and rollback the transaction. So let's create the temporary table. Let's run the begin, insert into this table, and rollback. And if I run the select, I have nothing. Okay, it's uh, normal because I do a rollback. So we can go back in a temporary table. Temporary table in a view. Let's create a view, a simple view, and let's create a temporary table inside this new view. <coughs> Let's run the query and we are explicit. Error message. View of function are not allowed on temporary tables. Okay, so we cannot create a temporary table in a view. And inside a store procedure, you let's create the show the and inside a story procedure, let's create a fantastic story procedure. And inside the story procedure, let's create the temporary table. It's good. So you can uh, create a table, a temporary table inside a story procedure, but not in view. So come on, let's move on to the next section. Synonyms. Synonyms is something you can see frequently in SQL. Okay, that allow you to give uh, to give a replacement name for handover object in the database. Okay, it's a kind of alias of the object, like a colon we saw in SQL. Okay, it's a an alias on the object. We will do a demonstration. I have already already create the database BDD one. Okay, create a simple table. Synonym insert just one row. And if I do a select into this first table, we have just two rows. Okay. Let's continue and let's create a nanover database BDD2 use BDD. Let's create a nanover table synonym 2. Okay, and insert some simple rows. And we have also two rows 3D and journal. Okay. So now we have two databases and each database contains a table. We will use the first database and if I want to do a select from this database, the BDD one of the table that is in the second database. Okay, we cannot. So let's run the synonym too which is on the database to invalid object name synonym. Okay. To be able to make a select on the table, which is in the second database, you must specify the name of the database before the table. Okay. It's not correct. Even though I added the name of the BDD. It doesn't work. So, uh, to correct this problem, to fix this problem, 
I have to put the DBO schema in front. Okay? So the database, BDD2, the schema, and the, and the following the table. And you can see that it works. Okay? Now, from the BDD1, I can read the, uh, the data on the BDD2 on the table synonym 2. Otherwise, to solve this problem, I can create a synonym. Okay? Create synonym. So, the name of the synonym for the BDD on the table two. Okay? So, I have already created this synonym on the BDD1 is here, BDD1 in the folder synonyms and the name of the synonyms. Okay? And if I do a select from directly from the S test synonym with this will tap type directly into the BDD2. Okay, to the engine. And I can even put it in the join. Okay, so let's check the two select from the first select. We do directly the BDD2 with the schema following the table, okay? And we replace it with the synonym. Otherwise, to write the BDD following the schema, we just replace it with the synonym, okay? And if we run the two select, we have the same result. Okay. So for information, we cannot alter the synonym. You, you must to drop and create this if you want to replace the synonym. Alter synonym, it's not possible. Okay. So it was the demonstration about of the synonym. Question 31, what is the variable table? Question 32, what is the global temporary table? Question 33, what is the UID? Question 34, what is the table function? Question 35, do what is the scalar function? Question 36. Do you know the usefulness of a cursor? Question 37. Do you know the usefulness of a schema? Question 38. Do you know the first values and last values analytical? Question 39. What is the point of the CTA in Transac SQL? Question 40. Do you know the over and roll number partition function? Variable tables. Unlike temporary tables, variable tables are prefixed with the, with the hat. Okay? We cannot commit or roll back on a variable table. We cannot go back. We can't commit that uh, we have validated on a variable table. It's the opposite of the temporary, temporary sorry, table. Variable tables are limited to the scope in which they are declared. Okay, <coughs> variable tables cannot undergo any structural modification. You can do an alter, a drop, a create, and a truncate on a variable table. View to finish views 
does not accept variable table. So let's run the first example. I declare a variable table. Okay, Batman, <coughs> Batman, my friend, and I write a go to change the session, change, change of session. Okay, I do a go and I do a select afterwards. Is it going to work or not? We have, uh, we see that we have an error message. Let's declare the table variable at Batman. Okay. And if I remove the go, is it work? Uh, yes, yes, it's work. So it's limited to the to the scope. This is an important difference between the temporary table and the variable table. Okay, understand? You must to remember about this important notion. Okay. So, modification of the table. Can I do an alter on this table? Declare the variable Batman alter table with the alter column. And let's run this fantastic query. So, we can't do an alter on a variable table. We also cannot to drop it. Okay? Can we roll back on a variable table? I declare a variable table, <coughs> big intro, like it's the same, same example uh, than the temporary table, big intro, insert into the variable table, values, work and roll, and a rollback. So let's run the query. One row affected, okay. And if I do, I run the select. We can see that the rollback didn't work because we have one more. Okay, so watch out for that. If you put a variable tables in your SQL script, remember that you can't do a rollback. Finally, can I declare a variable of type table in a view? So create view and following the declare statement, declare Batman. If I run in current syntax, near the keyword declare. Okay, we can see that it doesn't work. So we see that the major difference between variables table and temporary table uh, is that the letters are more flexible. <clears throat> we can do a lot of more things uh, on the temporary tables. Okay. So come on and let's move on to the next section. Global temporary tables. Uh, global temporary tables are visible to all users and connection after they are created and are deleted when all the users referencing the table logout the SQL server instance. The global temporary table are marked with two hash marks okay so for example i will create a simple table a temporary table so let's create a temporary table and if i do a new query a new session uh, from my copy and paste table session invalid object name table session okay 
as you can see the temporary table is going to be created and dropped on the session and what's about the session the global temporary table so let's create the table and if i hash add hash mark it's good we see that is it responds okay so that's the big difference between a temporary table and a global temporary table it uh, can help you during certain drug treatment if you want to share certain data on a global temporary table why not so pk4 does not go all out on this solution see the, see if it does not cause your performance problem ask yourself do you win it do you win do you need this global temporary table okay so let's go to the next demonstration answer our question 33 what is the guid the guid is a, uh, a sql data type that is globally unique across table database and server okay your id uh, stand for globally unique uh, identifier and is used in table as the unique identifier type and is 16 bytes in size you can see below a uid in the id A table function. Uh, table type function are what we call inline type function. Okay, we can create a function as if it were simply a table. Okay, let's go for the creation of the function. Create or alter. Okay, create or alter is new SQL Server. 2017. Okay, let's continue. Create or alter table function. Okay, it's the same syntax as that the scalar function. So return with the variable test and return and with the type of my variable. 2001 sorry uh, okay let's continue so what turns me a table okay as waiter I prefer this syntax and let's write my code so gender Count. Uh, count all the gender in my table contact so make as number from contact okay where my variable the, uh, test uh, equal so I think you understand gender Okay. And of course, don't forget the group by, otherwise it doesn't work. And let's write the second parenthesis to close my query into the returns. So here we did a table type function. Let's Forget the function just here. Okay, let's create my function table. Okay, it's done. And if we get a look on management studio, studio, you can see that there is my table function that is that has been created. DBO table function. Okay. 
and if you were mal query inside the function without the where to understand the <coughs> demonstration, you have two results, female with eight and male with 14, okay? So let's continue and now we are to call my new table function with the parameters mal. Okay, I think you understand. If I call my table function, you have just the mal, which is appears. Okay, and if I change with the mal, it's working perfectly. Okay, you have femal which is up here. Here we saw the table type function demonstration. So let's go to the next demonstration. The scalar function SQL Server scalar function takes one or more parameters and returns a single value. Okay, the scalar function help you to uh, help you simplify your code. For example, you may have a complex calculation that appears in many query. Instead of including the formula in every query, you can create a scalar function that encapsulates the formula and use it in each query. Okay, so the scalar function will return a value. To create a function I think uh, it's not very difficult. Okay, so let's go create function and the name on my scalar function. So scalar function. Okay, with parentheses with a variable. So uh, for the variable, let's tap that man with, for example, Bashar, 1000, and we put a second parenthesis to close the, the query. And for a scalar function, we, uh, we must to tap a returns, returns for the Bashar, Bashar, 2000, And let's write the has has a, like a story procedure begin and return for the example just the substring with the name of my variable that I declared before Batman uh, example just one and three. And the head. begin when you have a begin in transact, in transact SQL. Sorry, you have always a hand. Okay, remember this begin and end. So for now, we told it each time we call this function, uh, it will do a substring of the value in Vashar 2000. That will start with the left value at the start, at the start of the string. So the one here, so n is going to stop at the third character on the right. Okay. So let's create the function scalar function, and you see that the scalar function is in the programability sorry, section function and scalar fun value function. Okay, so my scalar function is just there, DBO, DBO scalar function. Okay, so how I am going to call this function? I just do a simple Select. So let's run the select with the 
le schéma GBO and the Scala function. That's very simple to, uh, to call a function and the uh, parameters we want to give it. For example, map. Let's run the function and we can see that the substring of free stopped at mar m e r okay so it's it worked fine so okay so there you go in this demonstration we created a scalar function that we return a value relative to a given string of character okay and if we put for example just a null it will put a null okay so know that if you put a null in the scala function it will put always a null a null too okay so let's go for the next demonstration Answer question 36. What is a cursor? A cursor is a data structure consisting of a data pointer to perform variable calculation across multiple records. Okay. The usage consists of declare the cursor defining the record with the set with a declare, open the cursor to set the record with the set open, retrieve data from local variable with the fetch, and close the cursor with the close option. Okay? The schema. This is something you will often see in the SQL Server when creating a table or store procedure or view. Okay? Maybe, uh, maybe you never paid attention. Uh, but schema exists on tables by default and also on store procedure view or SQL server object. Okay, so we are going to do a little section about the schema. So what is the schema? We can consider the schema as a bag. Okay, uh, where we will put all the objects in it. Okay, be it a table, storage procedure, view, and so on. Okay, so a schema is like a bag where we put object. You you will understand. You will understand why afterwards. Okay, we can also consider schema uh, as a sub basis. It can be convenient to divide your base into several parts in order to manage these different parts separately okay schema are very useful for security or sql server we will do a demonstration to better understand and you must to know that the default schema on sql server is dbo okay if you create a table and you don't the name of the schema it's dbo by default okay usually usually software package create their, their whole schema to separate their tables from tables in the schema dbo okay so we can say that uh, a schema look like this i have a schema on the lay schema and when I go to create storage procedure table or view on the rack you can say that these objects are going to be put in this bag okay so storage procedure table and view are going to be put in this bag so we will see in the demonstration to make to make it clear for you. Let's go for the demonstration concerning the schema. 
Okay, let's go for the demonstration about the schema. I use my database formation as usual. As you can see, the syntax in Sybil to create a schema. Create schema with the name of my schema. Okay, you can see it's quite simple. Okay, so let's create the schema it's done and you can see that the schema on SQL Server are in the security section okay if I draw a refresh schema on the security section schema and you can see that Star Wars schema has appeared in my schema section okay so here I'm going to I'm gonna to create a table that will be linked to this schema. So create table with the name of my schema before the name of the table with the point. Okay, schema and the table that I want to create with the name of my column, column one, a simple column. Let's create the table with the schema Star Wars and if I do a refresh on my table in into the formation database you can see that the new table Star Wars Skywalker is up here. Uh, you, you can see that it's different compared to the other tables that we created in the previous section. So the DBO schema is the default schema when creating a table. Okay, you can see the DBO schema by default when you're creating a table. It's very important to remember about the schema. So we insert a value in this new table that I created. And to remind you, when we create a table, if we don't put a schema default in front of the name of the table, it will take the default schema, which is DBO. Uh, let's let's go for the creation of a view. You can create a view uh, with an another schema with a specific schema. For example, I want to create a view with a specific schema. Okay, let's create this view. And if we refresh the view, you can see that the Star Wars view with the schema Star Wars view Dark Vador is now created. Okay. And we, if we look at the view, select from Star Wars, my view Star Wars, you can see that there is just one more. It works, it's working perfect, perfectly. Remember, you can also create a story procedure with the different schema, like the view. The great advantage of schema is the security. Okay, it's the big advantage of the security schema. I will create, for example, a user called Hobby One with the store with the, the password. So we one two three four five uh, until the nine, and let's create Hobby One user. If you want to see where is your new friend, it's Hobby One. It's just here, okay. I create a user, a new user on the SQL Server on my SQL Server uh, security. Sorry, okay. and I'm going to attach the Obi Wan, Obi Wan account, her account, sorry, to the database. Now you can see that Obi Wan is now here. Obi Wan can access to the formation. And to finish, let's give Obi-Wan the right to this account. 
ground select and schema Star Wars to Obi-Wan. He will have the ability to just select the table on the schema Star Wars to uh, just on the schema Star Wars. Okay? Come on, I will give him the right to the schema. Okay, it's good, and now I will log in with his account on the new Windows. So let's go for the new Windows. No, it's the another Windows. It's this Windows. And I'm gonna to connect with the uh, Obi-Wan account. So let's go for connect, just here. Connect database engine. And let's this formation and SQL server authentication. Okay, just choose this option and we type the Obi Wan with the password one two three four five six seven until the nine. Sorry, it's not the good server. I think it's this one. And retype the good password. And now it's good. Now Hobby One is connect is connected to the SQL server on my SQL server. Okay. Okay, so now let's make a right click on the server, new query. And copy and paste the script. Okay. We can see on the bottom right that it's Obi Wan that is corrected. Okay. Okay. Let's use formation database for Obi for Obi Wan uh, user account. It's working. Okay. Obi-Wan can connect to the formation database. And what does the select give from the DBO contact? So Nicola want to just to make a select for on this table. Let's run this query and you have a we have a error message. Select permission was denied on the OGP contact database. Schema DB. Okay? And with the schema Dark Vador, the schema Star Wars, sorry. So let's run the Star Wars select, the select on the Star Wars schema, it's worked. Okay? Because Obi-Wan has the good right to the schema Star Wars and don't have the right to the schema DBO. Okay, this is the great advantage of the schema, is that you can give give rights to a different schema. Okay, so as I showed you before, we put the object of the Star Wars schema in this bag, okay, of Obi-Wan. So Obi-Wan, we only see the object that have the Star Wars schema. And, and, that the, and that is the big advantage of the schema. Okay, so come on, let's move to the next section. First and last values. Uh, these are analytical functions that to appear uh, in SQL Server 2012. Uh, first values returns the first value in the ordered set of values. Okay. Uh, last values does, does the opposite. It returns the last value. So we will do first value and first value on the total due and we will do a partitioning on the customer ID. Okay. And it's the same thing for last value on the total due column. 
So let's run the query. So we can see here in the, cost, the first order total uh, that the values is repetitive three times. Okay, for the customer ID with the 11,000 because is the first value in the total due. Okay, uh, same thing for the next customer ID 11,001. The first value is this one and it's repetitive three times. Okay, and so on. Uh, so we cannot say that for the example last value it works the last value is this one okay but is not reflected on the another on the last order total okay in this cases you have to use the row unbundled following which I showed you in the previous demo. We are going to set a last value here always with the over partition by and we do a row between current row and unbinding following. Let's run this wonderful query and you can see that for the last value, this one, the result is good. And here it applies a last value in reverse. And you see that it works very well. Okay? Here we did a last values, a current row, and an unbounded following. So, to do a last values, you have to do it in the reverse order. Understand? So, let's go to the next demonstration. The CTE, CTE common table expression first appeared in SQL Server 2000, uh, 2005. Okay? And the great advantage of the CTE is that it makes a SQL query more readable, okay? Especially with the correlated subquery. At the level of the pure performance, the use of the CTE is completely transparent. That is to say that we will not work with a CTE if you want to improve the performance on your SQL Server. Maybe it will improve your performance on SQL Server in some cases, but in most cases that there won't be any. So let's work with this query with a simple inner join. Find women who are recruiters with the inner join. Okay, so if I'm run this query. I have six Grace Kelly, Will Smith, and so on. Okay. Okay, let's go for the derived table. So, we first see the derived tables. So, the derived table, it's equal the subquery in the from clause. Okay. So, let's go. Let's write our first derived table. So let's remove yes and let's add the parenthesis before the first from okay so the subquery is inside the parenthesis okay so let's copy and pass all the columns and let's add another parenthesis to close the subquery okay and the alias 
of this subquery is hey, just just here. Okay, you have the query C. It's it's a subquery inside the from. I forget the form, but I, I will write just after. And the alias of the subquery is the hey. So it's what we call a derived table. So I forget from the from. Okay. Let's add a comment. Derived table. Let's remove this alias and let's work a um, wonderful derived table. And you can see that ex exactly the same result that the inner j. Okay? So in this example, you learned how to write a derived table. And the CTE. So I'm gonna do a CTE. A CTE always begin with a, a with. Okay. Following the has, like the create procedure, the create view. Create view has, create procedure has. Okay. And I will declare my CTE following by the has and open and open sorry the parentheses and close them okay nothing complicated so far and inside the city here we put the query so let's go and remove the where and just past after the second parenthesis and just keep the inner join. Okay? If I want the inner join, I have my query that is works perfectly. Let's copy and paste the first select and copy past just after the parenthesis and I remove the employee table and I just replace from the city. Okay? I'll remove the alias just for the city and we have a error just here and I have to remove all the alias because it doesn't work. So remove all the Alias. I forget the city with city and it's good. Okay? So for me it's much more ready, readable this way, but it's up to you to choose. The important is that you know that we can write it this way to make it more readable okay and if i run this fantastic query i have exactly the, the same result than the inner join and that the derived table derived table so okay we can also put the names of the column uh, that we are going to call but it's optional okay so here I put the four columns that we call in the select. Okay, and if you run this query, it's exactly the same result. But this is optional. Okay, so now you can see uh, you can see some requests with the CTH and this following column. But know that this is option. So for me, uh, I prefer the city because for me it's much more readable. Okay, but it's up to you to choose. So in this demonstration, you have, uh, 
you have see you you saw sorry uh, three ways to write an SQL query a derived table a CTE okay and an inner join it's perfect so let's go to the next demonstration ranking function there are four ranking functions the row number uh, unique increment within a partition the, the rank returns the rank of each row within the partition of a uh, set the dense rank return the row of uh, the row of rows inside the partition of a uh, set and the hand time distributes uh, distributes the rows of the sorted partition into a specified number of groups. Maybe he doesn't mention to you, so I will show you this in the demonstration right away to make it much easier for you. I use the AdventureWorks database and I do a select with the format function and following the row number that we saw earlier in the next, the previous demonstration, sorry. And if I run this query, I see my row number that is incremented here, so, okay, for the number. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going for a product ID partitioning so so what i'm going to do i'm going to add the rank here and the dense rank that we saw earlier you will see that it's not but it's not that difficult sorry it's exactly the same request for the row number and the rank and the dense it's the same syntax that the row number. Okay. Let's execute this fantastic query. We see that for the row number partition, row number, it starts to uh, 710 for the row number, 1, 2, 3, and so on. But once we get to 711 okay it start again to 1 okay it finish at 710 and when it start to 711 uh, it start to 1 okay it's for the whole number column what good is rank and dense rank it does the same as row number. So we can see for the rank column, okay, here, uh, it starts to 1, 1, and you can see that on the left there is 710, 710, and 710, but we have the three same value for the order date, okay, for the 31 May we have two same values 710 the same order date and the rank is one and it start a new new row sorry for a different value in the, in the order date column and when is uh, it's a new value in the order date column it start to four okay for the dense rank, for the dense rank, it's the same function than the rank, so, but it starts to two. It's the big difference on the dense rank and the rank. Okay? So, in contrast, the dense rank repeats the values, but continues from the following value. Okay? But it continued from same here when you it's the different value on the order date the dense rank following it continues from three and the every rank uh, it's the 
row number 8 so it's rowing 8 understand it's this is the big difference between rank dense rank uh, and row number entire entire will je reprends 2 Entire, entire will cut the ranking, the ranking sorry, into piece, pieces. Uh, here I'm going to to split my row out of ten with the entire function. Okay, you can see that the syntax is quite simple. It's the entire function with the number. Okay, this number we split. split you row into you table. So let's run this query with entire. So here I have 266 rows. And so we're going uh, to do 266 uh, uh, divided by 10. And you can see, we will see that at the uh, 28 line, we start at 2. Okay? And we see here that he repeated the value 2 until the 54 line. And then he continued from, continued from 3 and so on. So it divide by 10. And if I put here a 2, for example, so let's go to the row 133. So you can see that it divide by at uh, by 2. Okay? So, if you need these kinds of query to split into the number of buckets you want, you need n time. Okay? So, in this demo, you see the power, the powerful ranking function. Never forget this ranking function. Row number, rank, dense rank, and n time. Okay? So, let's go to the next demonstration.